Hey guys, I'm gonna show you today how to find your ideal squat depth and width. Get up and get down, get up and get down. Hey guys, thanks so much for stopping by the YouTube channel. Today's video is all about how to squat for your anatomy. And I'm gonna show you how to find your ideal squat depth and width, how far you should have your feet so that you can squat to your best possible potential. Now I've got two very different examples anatomy wise about what works best for them. I'm gonna show you how I screen to find out someone's perfect squat stance. So I'm gonna start with Darren. Darren, I'm gonna have you with your feet uh, a couple different positions. We're gonna first start off with sort of a narrow stance. So we're sort of going to check and recheck and see sort of what works best. So I'm gonna have him do a deep squat right here. Very good. And let's turn sideways, come back up and turn sideways. What we're looking for is the point at which he loses his hip and back connection. So in this position, he has an ideal sort of neutral spine. So we have a slight arch in the low back. And as he squats down, what I'm looking for is when does he lose that? When does, uh, basically, when does his pelvis turn under in that butt wink motion? Ideally, we wanna maintain this flat back, which neutral spine is arranged, but we wanna maintain that neutral spine as much as possible during the squat, because that's gonna give us the best chance for pressurizing the core and lifting big weight to our best potential. So as he squats down, we're gonna watch how his back moves in this width position. Okay, right there, he sort of tucks under. So that's that butt wink at the bottom. Now right here, he's got a stance width that is, I would say more of about shoulder width. Let's come back up and I'm gonna have you squat a little bit wider. Okay, and then start going down again. So again, looking at that time, again, he's able to find a depth that sort of maintains a little bit more of that neutral spine right here. Is this the usual squat stance that you're in? Again, so Darren's an elite weightlifter. He's been competing on the international stage for a long time. He's found that a little bit outside of shoulder width is ideal for him. He doesn't squat ass to grass in that allows his body to collapse, but he's able to squat well below parallel. You see his hip crease right here uh, compared to his top of his knees. And he's able to maintain that rather uh, flat back, this neutral spine as much as possible. So our deal, whenever we're looking at squat width, is we wanna be able to find the position that allows us to squat as deep as possible while maintaining the neutral spine. So let's come back up and I'm gonna trade you out with Ed. Ed has a very different set of anatomy that I'm gonna show you here in a little bit. But Ed, I want you to squat. Uh, let's go straight forward foot position first. Um, and let's go about shoulder width and then we'll go wider. We'll look at that from the front and then the side. So he's gonna squat as deep as possible. You can see right here, not even to about parallel. And then let's come back up, squat a little bit wider. Or let's go a little bit wider right there. Mm -hmm. Squat down, okay. You can see he gets a little bit deeper right here. Now, this video is only on squat width and depth. If you're looking for how to figure out your toe angle, I have another video on that you can go check out. But let's look at this from a side view. So um, let's go about straight forward foot position, actually face this way. Okay, so let's go about shoulder width apart. So more of a narrower stance. Okay, squat down as deep as possible. Let's see where his back. Okay, right there, he cannot go any further. What happens if you do? So try to go down. You can see he already loses his back position. So his back is rounding. There's that butt wink where the pelvis is turning under and his back starts to round. And that's at about even above parallel. So let's now try with a little bit wider stance. You can see right here, now he's able to go a little bit lower and still maintain that flat back in that relative neutral position before his hips turn under. So for him, a wider stance is going to be a little bit better. There we go. So next, let's understand sort of why does this happen? Why, why do we have such a dramatic difference? We're gonna look at hip anatomy. Now let's come over here and look at Tommy the skeleton. Whenever we're looking at hip anatomy, we have the femur, which the end of it is shaped like a bowl. And your hip socket is basically that suction cup that's over the top. Now, as you go down into a deep squat, your femur is flexing this way and the ball is turning within the socket. Now, depending on your type of anatomy, you may have a deeper hip socket or a more shallow hip socket. So we can think your hip socket may be more like a bowl, very deep, or a plate, very shallow. 
And depending on how that is actually aligned will determine how much motion you have at the hip joint to allow for a deep squat. So if you think about it like this, if you have a bowl shaped hip socket, so a very deep hip socket, as you go into a deep squat, you will come in contact with the front side of your acetabulum. There will be more contact earlier than relative someone who has a flatter hip socket. So this would be someone who has that plate-like orientation set up of their hip. They'll be able to go much further because there's more room within the hip. Now this basically plays out to being something that's genetically gifted. Basically, uh, you can thank your parents for how deep your hip sockets are. It's not something that we can actually change. Here's how you can assess the type of hip sockets you have. So I'm gonna have Ed lay on your back right here. You are going to take your femur and you're just gonna go straight in line all the way to the shoulder. Now right there, I can get about to 90 degrees and he runs out of room. He has no more motion going up this way. So you can see from the side angle, that's about all he has. But now if I take him to the side at more of an angle, you can see he has more motion. So he can get his knee closer to his shoulder without his back position moving. So this would be a relative deeper hip socket in that he can now only get his femur this far forward into flexion before he sort of runs out of room. This is the femur running into the front side of the hip capsule. This is not necessarily due to soft tissue mobility, so the flexibility of different muscles around the hips, but it's because of his anatomy. And he can have a little bit of a deeper squat with his knees wider. So this is why that straightforward foot position about shoulder width isn't right for him. Again, we wanna to squat to the greatest depth with also maintaining spinal mechanics. Always spare the spine. Don't allow, put yourself in a position where that back is going to move out of that neutral ideal position. Now, let's compare this. Darren, I'm gonna have you jump over here. In this position, again, straightforward, look how far Darren can go. Much further, obviously, than Ed. So straightforward, he's got a very good hip socket anatomy, out to the side, even further. So you can see the difference, straightforward, and this is that narrower stance. Darren can get a good depth, but if he goes just a little bit more out to the side, a little bit of a wider stance for him, he can go even deeper. So this is going to be, again, showing us that Darren has more of that shallow hip socket relative that is going to allow him a greater depth of squat with maintaining a good neutral spine position. And this is what you'll commonly see in very elite weightlifters, is that they have a body that is genetically gifted for the ability to squat deep, to receive a snatch or clean and jerk in the lowest possible position with maintaining an upright chest. So you will rarely, unfortunately, see someone with Ed's anatomy be an elite weightlifter. Unfortunately, Ed's cut out for different sports. So let's talk about if you find that you have Ed's anatomy and you just don't have hips anatomy wise that are set up for a very deep squat, what do you do? Let's uh, come on over here, Ed, you can jump on up, Darren. The one thing that we can modify is ankle mobility often. We cannot actually change your anatomy of your hips short of surgery, but what we can do is give ourselves a little bit of assistance with ankle mobility. So this is where weightlifting shoes come into play. So what I'm gonna have uh, Ed do is I'm gonna show you this change real quick. So actually stay right here and uh, face that way. And what I wanna do is a, just a quick, simple uh, test retest change. I want you to use your regular squat stance, which is a little bit wider, and I want you to squat down as deep as possible. Very good. So again, we're just about that parallel position with his back uh, staying in that relative neutral position. Very good. Okay, come back up. So again, he's gonna put his weightlifting shoes on. Now, first and foremost, for someone with Ed's anatomy, I would work as much as possible ankle mobility. Even though he's going to use his weightlifting shoes, that doesn't negate the ability to still be very consistent with ankle mobility work, which is going to be foam rolling, banded joint mobilizations, things that you can see in other YouTube videos that I have. But when it comes down to picking up the barbell, we wanna put ourselves in the best positions possible to lift with great technique or better technique uh, than without the weightlifting shoes. Sometimes this is gonna be really, really helpful. So let's see the difference in squat depth right now. Because the weightlifting shoes has a raised heel, he's gonna be able to squat deeper 
with uh, a more upright chest. So let's see what you got right now with that. There you go. So he just picked up a couple more inches of squat depth uh, with the exact same squat width just by doing uh, uh, wearing the weightlifting shoes. So let's come back up and just go a little bit slower for a few more. Let's see sort of where that back tends to lose. So again, good back, good back. Right there, we start to lose that back. But again, that's a much deeper position than before. So come back up. Now we can't have a video on depth and width and not talk about the specifics of what strength sports may demand, such as powerlifting and the sport of Olympic weightlifting. While anatomy can dictate what potential we have for squat depth, the demands of the sport may modify what we need to express with load. For example, in the sport of powerlifting, a passing squat in competition only requires the lifter to squat to a depth where the hip crease drops below the tops of the knees. Now it's a little hard to see from this training lift from elite powerlifter Blaine Sumner due to the rack position, but you get the picture. A power lifter doesn't need to squat as deep as possible for a passing squat in competition. On the other hand, Olympic weightlifters like Chad Vaughn here should squat as deep as their anatomy allows without sacrificing the spinal position. This is because the squat is an assistant exercise for the weightlifter to help reinforce and build strength for the optimal carryover to the positions needed for the full competition lifts like the clean. All right, guys, so that is it for today. Understanding that squat width and depth is gonna be very individual to the person based on their hip anatomy, which you can thank your parents for. But understanding now that a test retest can give you a little bit better ability to see how deep can I squat while still maintaining spinal integrity. Never give up spinal position whenever we're loading. That's the quickest way to invite injury into the picture and lose out on vital performance that you're leaving on the table basically. So I uh, hope you guys liked today's video. Let me know if you have any questions below in the comments and please subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying the content that I'm making for you guys. Until next time guys, happy squatting. They say that energy flows where attention goes so i pay no mind why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos these people have